Hey everyone, this is the 42nd podcast, so you know, the answer to everything. Um, <laughs> don't know if I should make that the title or not. I'm not sure. Do people, I mean, people know The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? That's still a thing that people know. <laughs> um, anyway, my name is Claudie, and thank you for coming to hang out with me. Yay! So before we get um, into it too much, I just wanted to say, if you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you probably saw on the title, um, I'm dropping the show and tell part of the name. Um, I started calling them that really because I was like, it's not a podcast, like, I I'm not going to be formal and whatever. So it seemed to me at the time, like, I shouldn't call it a podcast and Maybe it would only be a podcast if it was just audio, and I don't know. So I just called it Show and Tells because that's kind of what it felt like more to me. And it still feels like that to me, but um, I think I'm just going to start calling it a podcast from now on. <laughs> I still need to change the website because I think it still says Show and Tell. I know it still says Show and Tell. So um, I have to get on that. But yeah, so from now on, it'll just be, you know, Crafting with Claudie or just a number or something like that. So yeah, this is the 42nd one. I had to look it up because it's been so long. I had no idea what number I had done. Um, and I realized that it had been a very long time since I recorded a sit down and then like show you all this stuff, like for real. <laughs> so yeah, um, things have been good and bad around here. I mean, not yeah, they've been good and bad around here. Let's just be honest. Um, there was a death in the family last week, and um, it was a person, like, they had, uh, it was my uncle, but my aunt and he had divorced uh, many, many years ago, and I hadn't seen him in a very long time, but, you know, he was around, you know, all of the time, because my, my aunt and my mom are very close, and... So it's like I I spent so much of my childhood, you know, there. <laughs> like he was around. And um it was really sad. It was really sad. Um uh, yeah. So uh that um I ended up when we found out and everything, um I had like a day <laughs> to get my house ready because we were going to have house guests. Um, my mom and my aunt and my sister and my niece and my cousin were all coming up and they were going to stay here. Um, I only have one guest room, <laughs> so, it, you know, I had to find some places, but it all worked out. And, um, luckily I had been doing the January cure for this month and because my house was for the most part, like, it was in pretty good shape. Like, I didn't have to do a whole lot except for, um, I cleaned the hall bathroom. Like, I did a real deep clean in it just because. And I cleaned the guest room. And then I did some other stuff. I kind of scrambled to condense everything to get caught up, um, and get ahead on a few things because I knew I really wasn't going to be uh, able to do much in the way on the weekend. I need to I need to make a whole video just devoted. Are you guys interested in this in the January cure? If you're not, I will stop talking about it. Mostly. <laughs> it's just like it's actually made my house runs a little bit better now. Um it it just does. I mean, it wasn't like bad before, or at least it didn't feel bad before, but I guess I just hadn't really taken the time to do a few things that really needed to be done. Um and now that sort of process has started and a lot of it's been completed. And anyway, it's been a good thing for me. And I will talk about it separately if you guys want, or I'll talk about it a little bit here and there um, because, yeah, it's made a big difference. But anyway, so I did, uh, my house wasn't too bad, so but I did have to kind of, I didn't have a lot of notice. So uh, this was the first time any of them had seen my house other than pictures. Um, yeah, I've had my house for nine months, <laughs> and my mom has not seen it. Um, but uh, it's basically, there were plans and stuff to come up, but then there were, like, illnesses or doctor's appointments that couldn't be rearranged. And anyway, it just turned out that 
this was the first time they were able to actually come to town. Um, and they only stayed a couple of like overnight ones and then left late the next day. Um, but yeah, so we did that. And then on Sunday, um, on Sunday, we went and saw a musical. We went and saw, I've got the playbill here. We went and saw Waitress. It was so good. It was so good. It was so funny, but also it had like some serious, not funny parts. And um, there was like one character that was so booable at the end, like when they do their um, vows, they take their vows and all of that stuff. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it was so good. Um, the music is written by Sarah Bareilles and I like her music. <laughs> so if you like her music, you will like the show. And if you don't like her music, I think you'll still like the show. The lady that they got to play Jenna, who's, who's the main character, um, her name was Desi Oakley. She, her, like, she was really great. She was so great. Um, and her voice was similar enough to Sarah Bareilles' voice that you could tell who wrote the songs. And I like that. Um, it, it didn't sound exactly like her, but it was close enough. I guess their ranges are the same or whatever, but it was really good. Um, there were a couple of characters that really just were, they kind of stole all the scenes they were in <laughs> a little bit, but in a good way, like not like in an overpowering it was just so good. It was so good. And, um, yeah, my husband and I went and, uh, we had a good time and yeah, I, I really love going to see, um, the plays and the musicals and stuff like that, the Broadway shows. Um, and we've been quite a few times now and I anticipate that we're going to be going a whole lot more. Hamilton is coming next year. It's gonna or next season, which starts in like September, I think. Um, so yeah, I have a feeling tickets might be a little hard to get for there. So I'm we may have to go to like a show not in our town, but <laughs> like not in Cincinnati. But that's fine. It is uh, it's supposed to be like you know it's going on tour, so it'll be here and then like Louisville, Columbus probably Indianapolis. So, I mean, those are all well within driving distance if we have to, because I'm seeing it. I listen to the, I listen to like the soundtrack all the time. And I know most of the words, probably all of them. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is not a thing about musicals, but it should be. Well, no, it will be when I win, I guess. Um, no, it, this is about crafts and yarn and all that good stuff. So, um, let's go right into finished objects. Um, why don't, okay, let me go ahead and start with the one that I don't have to show you. <laughs> um, I finished a hat for my soon-to-be born, um, cousin, and, uh, I don't have it here to show you because I already sent it, um, to give to my to my cousin. So I'm going to put a picture in here. Okay, so hopefully you saw that. Um, my editing software doesn't allow me to put a picture up, so I need to maybe get new editing software. But anyway, um, so you saw the hat. Um, it, I just sort of looked at some pictures of stuff and then came up with my own thing. Um, I cast on, I believe I did 60 stitches and I used a size, I want to say seven. Um, I used Vanna's Choice yarn. The uh, green-ish color is sage. And the um, beige color is linen. Super cute. Um, and then I just, I just did, I think what I say, I cast on 60 stitches, ribbing for an inch and a half, I think. And 
I can't remember how long it was until I'd started doing the decreases, but it looked about right. And <laughs> then I did the decreases. I changed, um, I did the yarn changes, I think one row or two rows after the ribbing and one row before the decreases for the, for the green band. Um, and then I did duplicate stitch over, um, you know, to make the H. So my duplicate stitching is not perfect, but I thought it looked pretty cute. So hopefully it works out. Um, I, it, it, once it was done and everything, it looked like, I mean, it looked like the right size and it still had enough stretch and everything. It didn't get weird or anything. So, um, but yeah, so I finished that and was really excited. I love making like baby items. It's just, they're so quick and they're so cute. And then the last thing, no, this isn't the last thing I have finished. The next thing that I have finished um, are socks. So these are the Prairie socks by, um, or from the Bakery, or not Bakery Bear, Kay Jones, who has the Bakery Bears podcast. Uh, the pattern was gifted to me from, um, or was gifted to me by Amy, who is Ming Mao, here on YouTube. I don't think, she kind of stopped making videos, but I told her she needs to start doing it again. So, hopefully she will. She has a, an Etsy store, Rain Barrel Designs, which I will talk about a little bit more later, but um, yeah. So, anyway, so she gave me the pattern, and I made these socks almost twice. <laughs> I cast on the uh, middle size, which is like my normal stitch count size, and it should have fit um, based on my gauge and everything like that, but it just didn't. So I I got to like here on one and like here on the other. <laughs> and so I had to rip them out, and I was sad because they didn't fit, and I was a little mad that I had to rip them out. but. Um, I, get, I put them in timeout for a little bit, and then I went ahead and restarted. Um, and I really do like the pattern. I, however, did not work the texture all the way through the foot. Um, it was taking quite a while, or at least it felt like it was to me, probably because I had done it twice. So I ended up tapering the pattern down, um, I think, five pattern repeats after the gusset decreases end. So, yeah. And I had someone ask me on my, I think it was my, uh, on one of the videos, and I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, but I had someone ask me um, if I would do a video talking about sort of, I guess, knitted socks for people who want to get into knitted socks, and I am totally planning on doing that. So if you have questions, or any specific concerns, or any of you guys have specific specific questions or anything that you want to know about knitted socks, please let me know in the comments. I should just, please let me know, because I want to help, because I love knitted socks, and I wish I had started knitting them sooner, so I want everyone to knit them if they want to. Knitted socks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, um, you can see the stitch pattern, or the stitch, um, texture. It's really pretty and I love this yarn. I had this in stash for a long time and it looks, it looked kind of different in the skein. Um, I didn't realize it was going to work up quite so lovely or I probably would have cast it on or made something else with it sooner, but it was for these. So the yarn is this. The colorway is Gaffer's Garden. And it's a yarn well spun. And I don't know. I think I'm shaking, shaking too much. Let's see here. There you go. Where I have it. I have the tag. Here we go. Uh, the Gaffer's Garden, 75% Superwash BFL, 25% nylon for 64 yards to 100 grams. I hope that I hope you can see that. I hope 
think for some reason my right hand is like shaking. Maybe it's this. There we go. Okay. Um, this is super pretty and it's, I just love it. I have another skein from her. Um, it's well, actually, no, I have a couple other skeins from her. Um, and yeah, the yarn's great. I have plenty left over to make something else. I just don't know what. Maybe, thinking out loud, I might make that, um, I'm pretty sure I have the pattern, the Susan Claudino, the bunny that she has. Um, maybe for my, for Easter, for my niece. That would make it pretty. <laughs> Sorry. I should just not talk about this on camera. The last thing that I have to show you is still on the Nitty Naughty. But I made yarn. So let's see. Can you see that? Oh, it's just so pretty. So let me see if I can get close. Do you see the barber pulling? I'm getting distracted by my hair. I'm sorry. It's raining outside and my hair is all over the place. Anyway, sorry. Back to the fiber. Okay. <laughs> yes. So this is beautiful, beautiful. This was a gradient and I didn't do like a real fractal spun kind of thing. What I did is I actually just took it, took the, the braid or whatever, I unbraided it and I just split it down the middle. And it was pretty even, but I managed to have quite a bit of leftover, mostly purple. Um, I think I'm going to make like a Franken skein. I've got a, a few other hand spun things that have like little bits left over. And I think I'm just going to kind of put them all together one day. But anyway, this is this. So the fiber, I bought this at a wool gathering in Yellow Springs, Ohio last year. Um, it's from Brenda and Heather Yarns. Let's set this down so I can show you the tag. It's Brenda and Heather Yarns. And they have this cute little sheep. And um, the colorway was Peacock. The fiber is 40% Superwash Merino, 40% Merino, and 20% Tussa Silk, four ounces. And you can see they put the color, like what, um, like how it gradiates through there. So cute. The fiber, it like spinning it was lovely. I had such, it was so nice. And I've heard that, well, I think when I bought it, she, um, I think it was Heather. Not 100% sure which one I was talking to. I can't remember. <laughs> they were at another festival that I went to too, so I'm getting the times confused, I think. But um, anyway, so I bought um, I bought it, and the the woman the woman that was working in the shop that that at that moment, um, or in the stall that moment, she was telling me that this was sort of a newer base that they had tried out, and um, it's lovely. So I mean, it's not 100% superwash, so I will have to hand wash it, but that's fine. I it's just it's just lovely. I love it. I mean, purple, green, some teal, blue. I mean, come on. It has that sort of mossy, kind of um, swampy green kind of color, too. I don't know what that's called. Lichen? Is that it? I don't know. But anyway, um, it's so nice. I, it's still on the Nitty Naughty, obviously. I think I said that. Um, I didn't have my thread, like my cotton thread that I used to tie it off. I had put it away and I just, but I wanted to show you and I, yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. I don't know how many yards yet. I'll show this to you again after it's had a bath and let you know like how it's poofed up and everything. But, um, I think my consistency was, 
I mean, when I if you looked at the close up, you could see there's it's not a hundred percent consistent at all, but I am very pleased with it. I think it's more consistent than I usually am, quite frankly, and most of the inconsistencies were really from um, the second part that I did because actually it's like the second part of the second part. I had thought I was done. I thought I had spun all the singles and then I realized that I didn't. And so I spun the last bit and I think I just spun it without taking as much time to really make sure I was keeping it even. <laughs> Basically I was being impatient. There we go. But anyway, I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, and the way that the colors, so when I, I think, did I mention? Yeah, okay, so I basically, I, I uh, split the braid in half and then I spun one from, let's say, green to purple and the other one from purple to green and then plied them together, just a two ply. And there was, there were actually, probably because of my inconsistencies with, uh, my thickness of the singles but there even the like the, it didn't there wasn't a lot that matched up exactly I mean there is like variations of blue on blue but of the same shade of blue there's really not that much so I think when it works up it's going to be very pretty and unique and then there's sort of like the purple and green on either side to like bookend it it's gonna be I think it's gonna be really pretty I don't yet know what I'm gonna make though thinking maybe a cowl um but we'll see how much I have how much yardage I have so yeah I don't know it, it's nice and I love it let's talk about what I'm actively working on now um I I've not cast on a new pair of socks I know what socks I'm gonna make but I've just not went and actually caked up the yarn yet <laughs> um I with, uh, with being busy like I was with um with house guests and funerals and all that stuff. Um, I just didn't, I just didn't cast them on. And I will give you a little secret. One of these socks that I was talking about, it might be this one. It is this one. I have not woven in the end. It's, I left a very long end on this one for some reason, but yeah. <laughs> Truth. Uh, Stephen West is doing like, what is he doing? Like, like knitting confessions or something like that so I feel a little bit like I'm doing that I don't think it's that's not what he's calling them but I can't remember truth and knitting I don't know but yeah so I I did weave in the other one I don't know sorry okay but anyway what I'm working on now um okay I'll show you the thing that technically actually is a work in progress there's crinkling. Sorry. I am spinning. I've only worked like 10 minutes on it, but it counts. Um, part of uh, my, my goals for the year were to uh, do like the 2018 Make 9 project. And one of those nine things was to finish this because I have, it's been a whip for a very long time. Um, these are Batlings from Hobbledehoy, uh, the space opera colorway. Yes. And they are, um, hand dyed, super fine, super wash merino wool and silk. It was a, a two ounce bag. And so you'd think like that would mean it wouldn't take that long because it's two ounces. I am spinning it ridiculously thin. Let's see. Can you see? That's ridiculously thin for me. <laughs> so, um, it's really, I, it's a beautiful color, right? I love it. And it's so, it's very nice. It's very soft and you can sort of feel the silkiness of it. And it's, it's just lovely. And the color is of course, lovely. I'm just gonna say lovely a few more times. I'll show you like, that gives you a better idea of the colors. So it's basically a lot of black with these pops of um, almost neon 
pink and blue and green and purple. It's I think supposed to look like um kind of like a nebula. So anyway, uh, this little section that I've been doing, it had a lot of pink in it, so it looks like it's mostly pink, but it's not. <laughs> If you look underneath, you can see there's other colors in there. This spindle is um, from Turtle Made, and I um, it's a Turkish spindle. I've had it for a while. I have another one too of this size. This is the um, I think she just calls it the regular size or standard size, maybe. Um, it's really nice. It holds a lot. Um, and I cannot wait to be finished with this because I kind of want to make something with it. I think this will be, it would definitely be something for me because these are my colors. And um, I don't know. I can't like, my mind kind of goes to cowl again. But I mean, there's only so many cowls I can wear or make. Like, well, I guess I can make as many as I want. But it's not like I wear a cowl all the time. So maybe I'll make... Um, I don't think I'll have enough for like a shawl or anything. Maybe I can pair it with something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm thinking out loud again, thinking on camera again. Um, so I've really only done about 10 minutes on it, just like just a little bit here and there. But um, yeah, excited. Okay. And then the other thing was one I was like, does this count as a whip? So yeah, <laughs> I. Um, Oh, another one of the make nine things is that I want to do like a potholes or hot pad wall like on this like I'd like to find vintage ones and things but like I don't think that's going to be a possibility and I mean I know I could but to find that many and anyway so I um <laughs> I've been like working through it and I had this like idea I was like well this would look really cute and I think I remember how to do it because it was like a specific um, regional kind of stitch and it did not turn out well <laughs> and I went and I verified I was like am I just like did I miss a step did I forget something what is going on so I went and I looked um, through um, like the technique manual or whatever and I was doing it the way they said to do it but I'm like I I don't know, maybe my gauge is all wonky, I don't know. But anyway, I am technically working on a potholder hot pad. It's going to be more of a hot pad. Um, this yarn is Lily Sugar and Cream in the Natural Stripes colorway. And you can see, like, I did some stuff, and then I had to rip it out. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm thinking I might actually make a tutorial video on that if if I can get it to work <laughs> sometimes when you don't follow a pattern things turn out weird anyway all right let's move on to acquisitions <laughs> okay so I bought two things and then I um, received some lovely items as a gift so let's talk about what I bought first they're down here. I bought pot holder um, cotton loops, like for my um, pot holder loom. So these are white. I bought a pack of white, and this I believe makes, yeah, it's enough to make two if I just all want it all white. But I got that to pair with this big old bag. Crinkly, sorry. This is the bright. Uh, variety. It comes in, I think, three different bright, designer, and pastel, I think. So I love the bright because, yeah. Um, with, when, when I bought the loom, it came with these three colors, and I did make pot holders with those three colors already, but, um, I just wanted a few more. I actually used those two that I made a lot. Um, I have laminate countertops in my kitchen, and you know you can't really sit anything super hot on that. So like I use those, and because they're really big, and you can 
they're just great for everything. I can use two of them down and put a, you know, a sheet, a cookie sheet or something right out of the oven onto, you know, the countertop and yeah. So this is enough to make eight. So when you combine the two, I should have 10, <laughs> 10 pot holders. I don't need that many. So I may give them away. Some of them, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, I, yeah, I was excited. I bought these on Amazon, um, but it's Harrisville Designs is the company. That's who, that's the loom I have to. Um, but it's like, you know, where they, they're the ones selling it, but Amazon's fulfilling it. Um, because I looked at their website and, uh, you know, they're in New Hampshire, I think. And, you know, it was, I was like, well, I could get two day shipping. And also the white ones were less than they were on their website for some reason. So I don't know. Anyway, so I bought that and so you will probably see some finished items of potholder or potholders soon. The last thing that I have to show you um, I, are gifts. I received a very wonderful, spectacular package from Amy Ming Mao, not her last name. Um, <laughs> uh, I received it in the mail today. Um, yes, so I'm still a little like giddy about it. So I'm, I apologize if I'm real rambly or anything. Um, yes, so I, I'm just gonna just kind of go right in because um, I don't really know where to start. I guess I will just start with what's right in front of me, which happened to be project bags. She has started selling them too. So um, I've just like, she sent me, she sent me four bags, guys. She's so generous and kind and, um, and really, she's just a really good person. And I'm not saying that just because I know she's, she will watch this. Or am I? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, I mean, she really is. So I'm just going to show you because this is so cute. So um, she sent me four bags. Four. I will start with the little one and work my way up, I guess. <laughs> so um, I went and I looked at her Etsy store. Her Etsy store name is Rain Barrel Designs. I'm not being paid to do this, by the way, or anything, but <laughs> just for full disclaimer all that stuff. Um, but I did look at her, uh, her Etsy store. So I knew what sizes these were. And this one, she's calling these little pouches cuties. Come on. Come on. This one has a, like the most adorable narwhal on it. Look at it. Look at it. I love this fabric. So this fabric actually has mermaids on it too. And you can kind of see there's like a little mermaid lady right there. And there's a tail. These are very little. So, um, you know, it's kind of hard to get a pattern repeat on something this small. But, um, yeah. I think the one she has in the store actually has like a mermaid and an arm on it, I think. I looked, it was really cute too. Um, these, this is like, you could put, um, and I, what I'm going to be doing with it is actually using it as like notion storage to keep inside another project bag. Cause I like to have little, um, sets of notions because I have multiple projects usually. And there's really nothing worse than being like, where are my little scissors? Oh, they're in another bag that I left in the car or I, whatever. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I guess there are things worse, but it's very frustrating when that happens anyway. So it's a really good size. I could put, I'm trying to think what I even have over here to show you how, like the size. So I use this stuff on my hands. <laughs> um, it's O'Keeffe's working hands hand cream um, because my hands get kind of dry and stuff. But like that will go in there. I could fit that in there. I could fit, um, I wonder if I could get a crochet. I think I could even get a crochet hook in there, a little one. Maybe. Diagonally, it'll go. <laughs> I don't think I would actually put it in there, but it would 
it does go well. Okay, it did go. <laughs> you could get a crochet hook in there if you put it in there diagonally. And that's just a standard Susan Bates crochet hook. So yeah, it's a really good size. This is my hand, so you can see. It's a good size for a Notions pouch. Um, I will probably be putting in there like scissors and um, measuring tape and needles and stitch markers and all that fun stuff. It has a slight boxed bottom, just tiny, like a little bit, which adds a little bit of uh, width to the bottom part. So, yay! Um, and this is interfaced. All of the bags are interfaced too, which I really like, but they're not like really stiff. So like I could, you know, you could fold it up. <laughs> And it, but it does pop back into shape. So, so this was the cutie size, the the little pouch. This is the small size. Um, she doesn't have any in this fabric. She does have this fabric available, but not this one. Um, this is the small size, and I think the small size, um, or I think all the ones she has on there have handles on there, and then um, my, the other bags have handles too. So, anyway. So it has a box bottom on too. She's calling them fat bottoms. And it is. I mean, that's that is what they are. <laughs> Look at that. So um, I don't have the measurements, but if you go and you look at her Etsy store, you can see the measurements on there. Um, she lists all of that information for you. So this would hold, um, let's see. So you all know what this like a skein of this looks like, right? <laughs> so um, I could get three with no squishing, easy. Maybe four with maybe a minimal amount of squishing in there. And then there's room on the top, you know, for everything to close and all that stuff. And if you laid them sideways, plenty of room. Um, so this would be really good for things like dishcloths. Or socks. I I will probably actually use this as socks, um, or for socks because that's the next project that I'm casting on. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it'll be really great. And it's I like this fabric too. Did I show you the inside fabric? It's just a nice neutral. It's a print, but it's a nice neutral, so it doesn't have. I don't think that's going to show up because you can see the. The light's reflecting through the other. There you go. There you go. So, um, yeah. Super cute. So the small size. And then this is the medium size. I have yarn in it because I wanted to see how much would fit in it. <laughs> and so I put the, um, the Vanna's Choice in there that I had used for the, um, for the little hat, for the baby hat. And anyway, so this one, I think this might be my fat, my favorite fabric choice. Cats in space suits and it glows in the dark. Yes, I love this <laughs> so much. Um, it has another neutral print in there. It's like, this one's a geometric print. And it's just cute. And this one's a um, handle. Just showing you all the sides. This one, uh, this one's medium. This is her medium size. And it has a, like a really nice wide bottom. I mean, I know why she's calling them fat bottoms because that's what that is right there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it sits really, really well. I mean, I'm holding it kind of wonky, but it sits really well on the table and there's plenty of room to get in there and do all that stuff. Um, I could fit, I mean, this is two that I did use some of the, some of the yarn out of this skein, but there was baby hats, so not that much. Um, I could fit three in there with more than enough room for a project. Four in there if I squished it with probably still having enough room for a project. Um, that's a good size medium bag. This is like large shawl, like maybe a multicolor shawl. Um, if you use cakes, like yarn cakes, 
uh, you could get three in there easy, like three good size ones in there with still plenty of room on the top for your project and needles and all that stuff. So I am very excited to use this. Maybe I'll do one of those find your fade things everyone's been doing. I really, I thought about it, but anyway, <laughs> I think this would be a great um, bag to, to store that in. And I know I'm like pimping it out a little bit, but you know, I'm very excited for her and I am very, I'm very happy with all these bags. And then she sent me this one um, and she did tell me <laughs> in uh, her note that this is like one of the first ones that she, the first bags that she made. And so it's not really representative of what she um, is selling, but uh, yeah. And you can't see my whole room, but this basically is the color of some of like this room. My carpet is uh, like a navy blue with sort of teal in it. And I've got like pops of orangey coral and <laughs> teal. So yeah. Um, and I say carpet, I meant rug. I don't have carpet in the house. So or at least not on the upper floor. Um, yeah. So yeah. So cute. And this one has, she again did like a neutral kind of lining. Um, I didn't ask her, but maybe that's going to be her thing. But she did put, I saw on the website that the, um, I know the space bat, the space cat one for sure had it. And um, I got distracted by that bag that I was just staring at. And then I was staring at this one. And so I didn't <laughs> double check on the other ones, but she did top stitching on this key, um, or not key, on this uh, handle, like hearts. Can you see that? On the space one, it's stars. They're not solid, but like there's stars. Cause I, I was like, is that part of the pattern? And then I was looking and I was like, I, well, there is, there is some stars, but it's not like in a line. And I realized that she had top stitched and I was like, oh. and then I looked at this one and I was like, oh. so <laughs> it's like your heart's so cute. Um, so, and then it's on the inside too, not just the outside. I love those little details. So yeah, I, I think, I think her bags are really great. And, um, you guys might want to like, they, yeah, she has a bigger narwhal one, like the narwhal mermaid one that I've got my eye on. So you might want to like get there before I do. Um, and then she sent me some fiber. Oh, she sent me, um, this one she said is for my keys and it's just, it's just one of the handles, but it's got bunnies on it. I have bunnies in my backyard. We got some snow and then you could see like tracks. I think but I don't know, like there were, there were lots of tracks. There were bunny tracks on our porch, which like on our front porch, which kind of scared me a little bit. I was like, they're in the front too. <laughs> um, makes me a little worried about when I change out the, uh, the fruit, uh, the, the flower bed <laughs> that they're going to eat all the stuff before it gets grown, but whatever. Um, yeah, super cute. Um, I know that she is planning on adding maybe some other things besides just project bags to there. So maybe there'll be some keychains if you, or you can use it as a keychain or you can use it as a handle on other project bags. Um, cause I know I've bought some that don't have handles and I like a handle just cause I kind of carry it like this, <laughs> knit with it sometimes. Um, but you know, you can use these for your keys all kinds of stuff. Like this one actually has a key ring on it. Uh, the other ones don't, but this has a key ring on it. So you could use it for keys um, specifically. And I think, I don't know if she'll agree with me, but I think she should sell her hand spun too, because I know that there are lots of people who like hand spun, but don't actually want to spin it. And she does such a good job. She sent me a skein of her hand spun and I'm going to get it out of the bag. And I'm, I'm a little envious of her consistency. I mean, like I told you guys, I'm not going to beat myself up about mine, but yeah. And her like, 
her twist is better than mine too. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so she spun this for me. It is greens and pinks and purples. I think she might know me just a little bit. And um, this is 264 yards of uh, Superwash Sport Weight Tar Heat. So Superwash Tar Heat Tar Heat, and it's a Sport Weight. And um, yes, so nice. It smells good too. I didn't smell it before. <laughs> Um, and then she gave me, I mean, she gave me uh, other stuff too. Um, a unicorn mug. This will go with my other unicorn mug that has like the, the knitting unicorn. And that way I can have a unicorn without having to immediately wash my mug right away. I can put it in the dishwasher and then, <laughs> and then still have unicorn goodness. And then she gave me, um, a, like a braid of fiber. And yes, she's just super fantastical. I'm overwhelmed, and I'm sure I am rambly about it, but I'm, uh, yeah, thank you, Amy. So, um, you guys should check out her bags. She is, um, she, I think she just, I think she just started, um, or I think she just actually put the listings up like yesterday I think so you guys should totally check them out check her out and um see if there's anything that you like and you know look out for more stuff because I'm sure she'll have more stuff soon I uh, she has sent me uh like teasers of other fabrics that she's picked <laughs> and I'm like and I want that one and I want that one and I want that one so basically she picks really good fabrics that's just, that's what I'm saying. All right, that's all I got for you today. Um, I am super excited to be back doing these videos. And oh, yeah, I can't wait to get this done. I can't wait to get some tutorials filmed. Um, I'm just having a really good time being back doing what I really, truly love doing. I love being on YouTube. Okay, uh, don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any questions about like hand knit socks. Um, so that way I can, you know, try to answer them uh, when I do the video on hand knit socks. And uh, again, I apologize that I don't remember the person I, and I, and I didn't write it down. But someone very sweet <laughs> uh, asked me a question about them. So if you have any questions about hand knit socks, you know, go ahead and let me know. Um, I, she did ask, um, like the different techniques and like which sort of, and what I kind of prefer to do. So, um, if you have questions along those lines or just anything in general, um, let me know and I will, I'll try to answer for you. All right. Well, I will talk to you guys next time. See you soon. Bye.